all, I'm Ashley Jenkins, and it's time for your weekly dose of news. Ready? After, no, no. I'm already eating throw things. <laughs> Jesus. After another high-profile swatting incident this month in which Joshua Peters, better known online as Koopa Troopa 787, tearfully berated swatters after his home was invaded because of a bogus threat call-in, a self-confessed swatter, oh this is like a test in concentration, has come forward to offer the perspective of those who do it and, unsurprisingly, he makes them all look like serious assholes. Not only did he admit that the real draw of the activity is power, intimidation, and feeling like the smartest guy in the room, but he also thinks that this is simply to be expected and should be the price of being a popular streamer. Obviously, we have some thoughts about that. Remember last year when that indie dev issued a death threat to Gabe Newell over Twitter? No. Meant in seriousness or not, you don't remember that? He said, I'm going to kill Gabe Newell. Gabe Newell is going to die. I remember those words. I got on Steam. Let's get off Steam. Well, it did get off Steam because whether meant that was meant to be serious or not, Valve was not having that shit. They pulled the game, Paranautical Activity, and said they would never work with him again. And at the time, the developer, Mike Malbeck, decided to leave his company, Code Avarice, and he left a snarky message then that he'd only ever get back into game development as one of a thousand at some shitty corporation. <laughs> or, you know, he could also just rejoin the same company, which is exactly what he did. He quietly rejoined a few weeks later. And the game itself, the studio sold off since they didn't have a hope of getting it published on PC's biggest digital distribution platform. And bam, there it is again. Now owned by Digirati Distribution, the game is back on Steam as a Digital Atonement Edition. Oh, stop. Do not fuck with Gabe Newell uh, or me. Please don't fuck with me. <laughs> and since we're on the subject of threats, the parent company of Bethesda, Zenimax Media, has threatened legal action against indie developer and YouTuber Jordan Marin, aka Captain Sparkles, for using the word Fallout in his game's name, Fortress Fallout, a name suggested by his community, by the way. After his lawyers advised him that Bethesda is notoriously litigious, like, uh, scrolls, anyone? Marin decided to capitulate and is now looking for new name suggestions. Go. Nope. Go. Oh, nope. Go. Nope. Uh, Captain Sparkle's Happy Adventure. Call of Duty. Fallout 4. <laughs> Dave Newell. <Five. laughs> it's been a week of ups and downs for PlayStation after their newest update caused some serious havoc for PlayStation 4 users who received a bunch of error codes while trying to download it. Reports that networking shut down once the update was applied, locked some users out of games entirely, and reportedly even breaked at least one console. The kinks have since been, since been worked out and the update's running smoothly now, so the PS4's many, many owners can rest easy. And many, many PS4 owners there are, because after a solid showing in November and December, in which Xbox One knows that PS4 as the most purchased console in those months, PS4's taken the crown back for the month of January, and even competing against its own previous iterations, it's doing crazy well. The PS2 is the highest selling console of all time, and at this point in its life cycle, had sold 18.0 7 million units, which has now been edged out by PS4's 18.5 million. Give yourselves a hand, PlayStation. It's a promising start to PS4's reign over this generation, but now that Xbox One's dropped price permanently, it'll be interesting to see how this ongoing competition plays out. Unfortunately, their first big exclusive for the year, The Order 1886, is... Well, that's probably not going to be much help. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier this week, a leaked playthrough of the full game on YouTube revealed that the game is shorter than many gamers expected, with a quick run through clocking in at as little as five and a half hours, which can work for some games if they're really well executed and tightly produced experiences, but that may not necessarily be the case here. Several reviews have given the game the cold shoulder for having too many unskippable cutscenes that eat into the already short time of the game, though it is agreed that the game is technically very impressive. The game's out today though, so hey, you can make up your own damn minds on that. There's also been a Star Wars leak, specifically for the upcoming Battlefront game from DICE, which is due out this year. According to the leak, you can expect the game to tie in heavily with the Star Wars movies and serve as a lead into The Force Awakens since it'll be out shortly before the movie premieres in December. I want it now! <laughs> the bulk of the game is set to take place during the original trilogy, with participation in some notable and familiar battles, though there will also be a little bit of prequel content, some nods to the Clone Wars, and some original content to help fill in gaps between End of Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens, but not too much since Lucasfilm may be working on movies set during that time period. You know they are. It's going to happen. They've got spin-offs planned already. I want 100 movies. Goonies 3. 
and onto Nintendo, where they've crowned the best-selling amiibo so far that can be found anyway, since some of the runs have been just insanely difficult to find. What have you done to this set? Well, oh no. <laughs> since some of the runs have been insanely difficult to find, and there's a shortage of both Amiibo and new 3DS units caused by a strike in ports on the West Coast that's got all the big ships and their cargo backed up, so it's all kind of a mess. But of the Amiibo available, the top sellers are Link, Mario, and Pikachu, at least in North America and Europe. In Japan, Kirby uh, apparently ate Pikachu and took his spot. Nintendo's also revealed that they'll be enabling Amiibo to unlock bits of classic NES and SNES games on Wii U sometime in the first half of this year. Interestingly, it looks like there are also some secret Amiibo on the way. A Walmart advertisement has added a gold Mario Amiibo as a retailer exclusive, and a silver one may follow suit, though where he'll end up is anyone's guess. Not the first time since Shulk was a GameStop exclusive, Rosalina and Luma was a Target exclusive, and what are you doing? Don't worry about it. What? And... Uh, and, Meta, and Meta Knight was a Best Buy exclusive, but there you go. He's coming somewhere, probably. Finally, and not exactly news per se, but we paid a visit to Gearbox Software in Dallas to learn more about the Homeworld Remastered Collection that hits digital shelves next week to find out what's changed, what's the same, what's up with Cataclysm Missing, that was one of my favorites, and so on. So if you're feeling in the mood for a bunch of in-depth features on that, we've got you covered. <laughs> I like the game, it looks amazing. I'm a huge nerd about it though, so of course I was gonna be happy. Now, moving on to movies and uh, TV as well, as District 9 Elysium and Chappie director Neil Blomkamp has confirmed he'll be working on a new alien movie next after taking us on an emotional roller coaster the last few weeks. First he teased it, then he said he was off the project. Also, that dude really loves making his announcements on Instagram. <laughs> Whatever works for you, man. <laughs> Sigourney Weaver has been attached to the project previously, though. No word if that's stuck through the on-again, off-again developments, but come on, she basically is the alien movies at this point. Also, good or bad, depending on your outlook, is the revelation that the uh, <clears throat> smug pricks who've read the Song of Ice and Fire novels by George R.R. R. Martin won't be able to spoil the Game of Thrones TV show anymore because the series is going to start killing off different characters. <laughs> that one went a little... A little the development was revealed by Martin, who said, People are going to die who don't die in the books, so even the book readers will be unhappy. Everybody better be on their toes. David and DB are even bloodier than I am. So, maybe time to uh, get that uh, Save Tyrion hashtag ready to go. Even small changes have had a pretty serious impact on the way this show has played out so far, so if they start kill killing off book safe characters, oh my god, there's no telling how much the two stories are going to diverge. <laughs> Finally, in the world of tech, do you remember the Amazon drones? Yes. They could be in some trouble with new rules the FIA is proposing as to how and where the drones are allowed to go, which include limiting them to line of sight with the operator and keeping the max altitude below 500 feet, and also forbidding them to fly over anyone besides the operator. There are already restrictions on drones that forbid them from flying into airports and stuff, but there have been plenty of weird disputes with property owners shooting down drones straight across their property lines, and the drones have been used to peep into the houses of other people before, so it's not that surprising that they're being tightened down on. Looks like we'll just uh, have to go with delivery blames for now. What if you have a drone following the other drone so you can keep an eye on it? What if you like can a drone see train. the bedroom of the hot girl and you set your drone in it, so technically it's line of sight because you're normally using your binoculars, but now you don't have to because there's a camera on your drone. And your drone is your penis. Move on! That's it for this week, but keep an eye on the note for news throughout the day, every weekday, and we'll be back next week for a whole bunch of stuff for your brain hole, even more information, whatever. Have a good weekend. Thank you, Andrew.